Hello learners, welcome to this session on modes of transportation. I am Dr. Paramita Shuklavadya, Faculty School of Tourism and Hospitality Services Management, IGNO. As you are aware, tourism is the largest movement of people during peaceful times. To move from one place to another, the tourist obviously has to use transportation. As you know, we have a point of origin and a point called destination. The tourist moves from point of origin, that is his home state, to the destination where an attraction is there for the tourist. So the mode that is covered, the route is covered via transportation. So today we are going to discuss about the various modes of tra transportation that a tourist uses for this purpose. Uh, after going through this session, the objective of this module is to help you explain the stages of development of various mo modes of transportation, the growth of different stages of transportation, identify the various methods of transportation as well as discuss the types and importance of surface transportation in tourism. So, as we have discussed, accessibility is one of the most important components of tourism. In tourism, you have learnt in the previous lessons, we have the A's of tourism, attraction, accessibility, accommodation, amenities and activities. Accessibility is how you reach a destination from your place. Accessibility is achieved through the modes of transportation. So, when we look at the growth of transportation over the years, we realize that we have seen the advent of transportation from the very ancient times. The ancient times we have seen that people have moved from one place to another using either surface transport by the means of bullock carts, uh, in the means of ship, boats. They have also used horse drawn carriages and over a period of time we have seen that this transportation has moved and there was the development of sails as uh, it was done by the Egyptians. Then water transportation became a very big thing. We also had the advancement of discovery of rudders and compass which gave people a chance to travel beyond their regular natural environment. Over a period of time, there were other technological advancement, development of transportation both in the ships as well as motor vehicles, which was most prom prominently observed in the 20th century when we saw the internal combustion engine. How has it affected the transportation and tourism business? Well, people had a larger area to cover. They could move faster using the land transport and they could also go from unknown lands which was not available to them earlier. Now, if we see the development of transportation, we can say that the modern times arrived from late 1950s with the advent of airways or airlines. Airlines were already in use earlier, but after the World War II, airlines started being used commercially for the tourist purposes. So, tourists could actually travel across the Atlantic in half the time which was taken through cruise ships or regular ocean cruise liners. In this event, what happened was that the world globe actually in reduced in size. We also saw the advent of motor cars, railways and ships. Railways could actually take you to hinterlands now still unknown and roadways meant the last mile connect. So, uh, la why do we call it last mile connect? We call it last mile connect because you may reach another destination using the airport or maybe the port or even maybe the bus stations or railway stations. But from that station to your destination or the site where you are going, you need a surface transportation in the form of buses, cars, private cars or taxi. That is why it is always known as the last mile connect. Yes, you can also probably use rickshaws or some other mode of transportation for the last mile connect. Now, coming back again to the development of means of transportation in India. 
when you look at it, we can actually divide it into three eras. One is the pre-colonial period, that is before the British Raj, the so-called British Raj. So, transport we can say was well developed during that period of time. Why? Because historical figures and facts tell us that we had trade routes that linked several rural and urban centers to the ports and we had silk routes, the famous silk routes. We had markets, spice markets, uh, you know the famous spice markets of Hampi. So, yes, there are many routes and roads that were available. When we look at the uh, township and township plans of Harappa and Mohenjo-daro, we say that we see that there are many well planned roads among the township for connectivity and especially they were used for trade. And who can forget that the famous Sheshar Suri actually laid down the Grand Trunk Road for that. That was the most famous route for transportation of trade, right. So, we had a pre-colonial era of transportation which was primarily for connecting the ports with the markets. Then came the colonial period. So, what do we see in the colonial period? In the colonial period, we have found that British ru uh, colonial rulers had to link the ports to the hinterlands. They after all came to the country as merchants, as merchants. So, when they have come here to do business, they would have to transport both raw, mat raw materials as well as finished products using such an routes and roads. So, roads were laid down for the purpose of trade and railways emerged as the biggest help during this colonial period both for trade as well for administration. How did it help the administration with the railways? Railways emerged in uh, India with the help of the British empire. This railway lines and tracks were used to disperse not only goods, but also troops and police. So, the administration could take a control over the hinterland. Then we had the schedule year service, which also started during the colonial era. Then comes the time of post colonial era that we say is the independent period. So, post independence, the first and primary thing was to start developing and maintaining all the neglected routes, roads and tracks during the second world war. So, once this rebuilding took place, then we had the five year plans, which took care of all the rebuilding of transportation routes and all. Over a period of time, we have realized that transportation that is being used can be actually classified into three different types. right? So, the transportation that we have is either surface that is the land, we have the uh, transportation that is air and we have water transportation. So, when we have the case of land or surface transportation, it is having two different paths, first would be the road transport, which is under the ministry of road transport and highways. Then we have the railways in India, which is under the ministry of railways. The air the, that is involving the airlines, whether it is private or it is chartered pub, public or scheduled airlines. We have the scheduled airlines like uh, Air India and Jet, which is defunct right now. We have uh, scheduled airlines such as Air India, Spice Jet and so on. Then we have chartered or the private airlines and the air transportation is taken care by the civil aviation ministry. And then finally, we have the water transportation, which is under the ministry of shipping. Water transportation and air transportation will be taken up in the next module, next session. Today, we will be talking about surface transportation. In surface transportation or land transportation, we will primarily talk about road transport and rail transport. So, what is the importance of road transportation in tourism? Usually, people take road transportation because the timings are flexible. You are not bound by when you have to go according to the airlines or by the railways. At the same time, uh, there are places where rail and airlines do not go. So, in those places, those far flung places, roads are the only way to reach there. 
So, when we start counting the advantages of road transport, we always say that the road transport is the last mile connect, it is the final door to door connect. At the same time, it, the speed is also be there, speed is there since you will be going according to the how good the road is. So, you will have uh, the speed there, there will be flexibility of time, flexibility in traveling, how so? Flexibility in traveling because suppose I am traveling from Delhi to Chandigarh, I can take a flight, I can go by train, but at both the cases I will not be stopping in between according to my wish. But if I travel by say my own private car, then there will be many places along the way where if I feel the urge to I can stop and admire the natural beauty or maybe even stop for a bite. So, the flexibility of traveling is there, even if you travel by buses, road transport buses, the surface transportation or the land uh, road transportation gives you this easy way of traveling by stopping and route. Now, what could be the disadvantages of road transport? One could be and is usually traffic delays. Second, you have no clue, maybe there might be a accident maybe the driver is not that good, maybe there is a breakdown, maybe the there is a carelessness of the driver, maybe there is a route change, maybe there is a bad weather and your trip is spoiled. So, both advantages and disadvantages are there in the case of road transportation. When we talk about road transportation in India, we realize that road transportation in India can actually be one of the most dominant mode of transportation. Why? Because it has got tremendous traffic share. Among the modes of transportation, roads and railways, road transport actually carries 90 percent of the total passenger traffic. It is same in the case of freight, it carries 67 percent of freight traffic. In the case of road transportation, it actually provides or contributes 3.3 percent of gross value addition against the total transport sector contribution of 5 percent in GVA. Now, Indian roads, how do we classify Indian roads? Indian roads are classified as national highways, state highways, district roads, rural roads, urban roads and project roads. National highways, national highways are actually the principal arterial roads and are the economic backbone of the country. They are the one who connect union capital with all the state capitals. They run along the length and breadth of the country and most importantly connect major cities with the ports, rail junctions and industrial and tourist centers. It, they are also there to connect the border roads and the highways of national neighboring countries. So, national highways can be further classified as two lanes, four lanes or six lanes depending upon the width of the road. When we have national highways of more than six or eight lanes, then we have the special categories of roadways that is the expressways. You might have heard of the expressway like Yamuna expressway, Mumbai Pune expressway, Ahmedabad Vadodara expressway, which are also part of national highway system of roads. More primarily, you should also be aware of the fact that right now in India, we also have the concept of green highways. Green highways means there is a plantation, transplantation, beautification and maintenance of roads using the plants, plantation. The most of the expressways are metalled, more, almost all the national highways are metalled except for a few such as the Mumbai Pune expressway, which is constructed of concrete. Uh, then we have the state highways. State highways are the highways that connect state capital with district headquarters. It also connects major cities of the state with the minor ports and state. These roads are administered and financed by state government. Then we have district roads, which comprises of major district roads and other roads. They provide connection between the district and taluk headquarters. As per classification, major district roads should at least be 15 meters wide with specification of density of the metal road. 
Then we have the rural roads. As you know, most of India still lives in the villages and the rural roads form the substantial part of the road connectivity. When we look at it, we find that in the case of the length of the roads that we have, rural roads actually have 70.65 percentage of the total road share of the network of our country. This is according to the 2016-17 report of the ministry. Rural roads connect the villages among themselves and also the villages to nearby urban centers and district roads. When you move forward from the rural roads, we have the urban roads. These urban roads are usually the roads within the cities, major townships. This urban roads are uh, the arterial roads of the city and looked after by the local municipal departments. After this urban roads, we also have the project roads. The project roads are the roads which are under the projects of certain state and central government agencies. This includes the roads of forest department, irrigation department, electricity department and so on. Roads in the coal fields, coal mines, uh, steel authority of India sale, national mineral development, they are all un and many such are all under the project roads of the country. So, we have a whole system of network of road transportation in India which helps us to be in to which helps us to connect each city to the other. Now, when you have a such a well connected road system in India, how does it affect the tourism? There are many tourists who prefer to travel by road. There is a whole bunch of adventurer tourists, if you speak to them would still like to travel to Leh Ladakh by road. There are many such tourists who travel from Bombay to Goa by road. The east coast road is also one of the very well liked the east coast road is also one of the well liked roads of eastern coast of the country which people travel by road instead of taking probably railways accessibility that they have. So, when you come across a tourist who would like to travel by road, you should be aware of the connectivity that exists between the destinations. You have to be aware of the fact that there are certain destinations probably in the hill stations or in the remote corners of the country which are accessible only via road. There kind of might also be a time when your tourist misses his train or maybe his flight and he has to reach or she has to reach the next destination on time, so that the itinerary is completed and continued. In such cases again you need to have the knowledge of the roadway system and we also have special cases where tourists request for scenic travel by road. They would like to travel in groups, friends who would like to travel on the road and enjoy the time together. As we have many a times heard, it is not always a destination, the journey is and always it will be pleasant as well, as interesting if not more than the destination. Now, that takes care of our last minute connect by road transportation that is one part of the surface transportation. The next is the rail transport. Indian railways as you are aware is one of the largest network of railways in the country. Rail transport is also known as at times train transport. The history tells us that modern railway transport system as we know today commenced with the British empire or rather the British development of the steam locomotives in the early 19th century. During the 1940s, non-electrified railways in most countries had their steam locomotives replaced by diesel electric locomotives. And during the 1960s, electrified high speed railway systems were introduced in Japan, which later on it was introduced in other countries. As of now, most of the countries are in the process of replacing they are diesel locomotives with electric locomotives mainly for environmental concerns. When we look at the railway systems globally, we find that United States has the largest railway network comprising of 1,49,910 kilometers. This is followed by China and Russia and India has the fourth largest railway network in the world. 
Railways, as you know, is the major inland transport system in country in India, and it is also used primarily by the domestic tourist for long distance travel, for comfort, and as well as for its cost effective concerns. So, when we say Indian Railways, as we say, is the fourth largest railway network in the world with 67,368 kilometers of route length and a total track length of 1,21,407 kilometers. This is as of March 2017. It must have increased by now. Uh, to give you a few more baffling data, Indian Railways runs more than 20,000 passenger trains daily and we have 23 million passengers traveling in it. In the year ending March 2018, Indian Railways carried 8.26 billion passengers from 7,349 stations across India. It is not just the passengers who travel by Indian Railways. Indian Railways is also the biggest segment of freight transporters. In the year 2017-18, Indian Railways had taken more than 9,200 trains daily with the freight segment transportation of 1.16 billion tons of freight. Indian Railways, as we are aware, is the largest network of railways and can be classified based on the tracks width or it can be based on the services that it provides. When we talk about the tracks width, the classification base for railways, then we say that they are of the three gauge, the three types. The first one is the broad, broad gauge measuring of 1.6 meters width or the meter gauge which measures 1 meter width naturally, hence the meter gauge. And then we have the narrow gauge measuring 0.76 or 0.61 meters width. This is the way of classifying based on the uh, width of the tracks. So, when we move on, we have found that broad gauge is the most prominent form of tracks that is used in the country as of now. As of now, 90 percent of the route network has been taken up by the broad gauge. This again is as per the report of March 2017. So, this is one way of classifying or understanding Indian railways that is based on the track width. The other would be based on the facilities that the Indian railways provide us. So, we have some extremely first, we have some extremely fast running trains which are operated for the speedy movement of tourists. Uh, like we have the Rajdhani, Shatabdi, Duranta Express, some AC trains, Janta Express trains and such which are operated for everyday movement of maybe businessman or frequent travelers as they travel on a fast speed. Along with that, we also have heritage trains and special luxury and semi-luxury trains. So, uh, heritage trains, uh, special luxury and semi-luxury trains are for the tourist purposes or the tourism activities. Now, when we speak about the various network of Indian railways, how does Indian railways help us to promote tourism. There are few such schemes which is helping us to do that. For example, there is the concept of in rail pass which is provided to the foreign tourists. In rail pass is given only to travelers coming from abroad or the NRIs and can be bought only by using US dollar, pound sterling or any other convertible foreign currency. So, what does in rail pass do? It gives the trans, uh, travelers traveling all over India on a budget and possibility to, to travel on any route without any restriction for the within the period of validity of the ticket or the in rail pass. So, this is one of the ways that how Indian Railways is doing that. We also have various other options such as there is an uh, automated or computerized ticketing system, which is also being promoted with the help of IRCTC, which helps you to book tickets in advance, so that you can plan your travel across the country anywhere in advance. So, it helps a tourist to make plans 
as well as if you are a travel agent or tour operator, you can make the booking for your tourist according to the itinerary to make sure that the tourist does not have any trouble when he or she is traveling for the purpose of leisure. Now, as I was speaking earlier, the railway system also has various services which are over and above the service of providing transportation from one place to another. These are the special tourist trains which are also referred to as luxury, semi-luxury and so on. So, some of the special trains, some of the uh, luxury and semi-luxury trains are also available for the purpose of tourism. One of them would be the Palace on Wheels, a luxury train service frequently hauled by a steam locomotive to promote tourism in Rajasthan. Similarly, certain luxury trains such as Maharaja Express, Deccan Odyssey, Golden Chariot, Fairy Queen, Mahapar Nirvan Express and Air uh, Golden Chariot, Fairy Queen, Mahapari Nirvan Express and Air Condition Service also known as the Buddhist Circuit Train are few other luxury tourist train. You will learn more about this luxury trains in details in the other course TS2. So, this luxury trains or the semi luxury trains are for the tourist purposes and are also referred to as luxury tourist trains. These trains offer you a chance to experience various destination by traveling on the same train and they also have different decor, different ambience to suit that era in which this luxury train refers to. There is another important uh, introduction that has been done to promote tourism via train. This is known as Vista Dome coach. What are Vista Dome coach? Vista Dome coaches are the one with glass roof for the top. So, this glass roof top is used for the view. It has been started in Mumbai Goa route, Vishakapatnam Kirandul route and will soon be started for the Kalka Shimla route. Along with that, Indian Railways also has two very important UNESCO World Heritage Sites. You must be aware of the Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Terminus of Mumbai as well as the Mountain Railways of India which have three lines that is the toy train of Darjeeling, the Nilgiri Mountain Railways of Tamil Nadu and the Kalka Shimla Railways of Shivalik Hills. So, to conclude we can say that Indian Railways gives you option not only to travel from one place to another, but also tourist transportation. In this module, if we sum it up, you have gone through the understanding of different types and means of transportation. The development of means of transportation in India right from the time of pre-colonial till the post-independence era. We have discussed the advantages and disadvantage we have discussed the advantages and disadvantages of road transportation, the classification of road transportations as in India, rail transportation in India, the classification of rail transportation especially with concept of tourism. Let us not forget that tourism is to be promoted by using the means of transportation. After all, if the means of transportation is not there, how will the tourist reach the place or the attraction? In the next module, we will be discussing air and water transportation. Till then.